Hi everybody, Jennifer Blevins-Smith with Integral Clinic Solutions, and you're watching my YouTube channel, Navigating the Business of Medicine. Today, I want to talk about the last quarter checklist. That means the last quarter of the year. Can you believe it? We're already in the last quarter of 2022. I don't know about you, but I feel like this year has just flown by and so many weird things have gone on and happened. And I just, I just feel like I blinked and we're here, but you know, this is a big quarter for businesses, especially in the medical field. And I felt like there's no time better than now to bring up some of the big things that I think that you need to start focusing on in your practice and working on this quarter to be ready for the new year. So what are some things that can be done during this quarter to help you prepare for next quarter? The first thing is your budget. If you haven't started budgeting for next year yet and putting things together, you need to do it. You're a little bit behind the ball, I would say, but it's definitely still doable. And you wanna make sure that you're taking into consideration any goals that you have for next year. And I know I have done V recent videos about you know trying to maybe attend some conferences or joining some academies or professional associations but you know that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg you know are you going to have to anticipate hiring more staff or another provider are you going to want to offer a new service or diagnostic treatment that's going to cost a little bit more because you have to buy a machine or you have to buy the supplies or maybe you have to hire a specific staff member for that service are you going to try to get another location? You know, there's so many things for growth, but maybe you also kind of want to downsize or you need to downsize a little bit. And so that also has to be taken into consideration. You can ask your bookkeeper to help you. I would sit down with them and I would ask them where they see some things that might be of concern or things that need to be paid extra attention to in the budget for next year. Maybe they're noticing you're spending more on supplies than you anticipated, whether it's office supplies or your medical supplies. Perhaps they're noticing an increase in some utilities that need to be brought to your attention. So it's definitely important to get them involved with this. Uh, look at your payroll, and hopefully you look at your payroll every time you run it, but you know that's something to look at and consider. Your benefits, especially if you're a January 1st start with your new benefits that you offer to your staff, you're gonna have to start shopping around now because most likely you're gonna have to be signed up no later than probably mid-November in order for everything to be taken care of and ready to go by January 1. So you're not only going to have to anticipate the cost of those benefits for your budget next year, but you're also on your checklist is going to be shopping around and working with a broker or whomever is in charge of doing that for you. Right now, getting on the ball and trying to figure out those options to consider those different plans and how much it's going to cost you, what are the benefits that you're going to be able to offer to your staff and moving on. On from there. The other thing that you need to think about is the first quarter of next year because it is deductible season. Most people, I would say 75, 85% of people, their insurances start over January 1, which means all the patients you see and treat after January 1 is all going to be applied to patient deductible. So how are you going to tackle that in your office and make sure you're capturing as much revenue up front as you can? Because when you're relying on patients to pay your bills essentially, because that's what it is, insurances won't pay till their deductibles are met, you have to have some kind of policy and procedure set in place. And if you've never done this before and it's something you're considering, you need to draft up that policy and procedure and you need to start getting that ironed out, training your front office staff what their roles are in that, and then also maybe putting up some flyers in the office to notify your patients or sending out a mailing to your patients to inform them of a new policy starting the first of the year so that they are anticipating it as well. People don't like to be broadsided and being like, oh, you have to pay for 50% of this up front because you haven't met your deductible and it's gonna upset some people. So you wanna make sure it's a well thought out process and plan, your policy is in place, so you need to start doing that now. When you have to rely on patients to pay your bills, it's stressful. And even well-established clinics and businesses for the first 
quarter, first quarter and a half of every year, it's very tight. You'll get an influx of money probably by the end of January, beginning of February, because it's all of the insurance processing and completing all the claims that were sent before the end of the year for services in 2022 before the new year. So you're gonna think things are good, but it's kind of a false sense of security because that has nothing to do with the patients you've seen in 2023. It only has to do with patients seen up until the end of the year. And so you think you're gonna keep getting those big cash loads in, but it's not. Usually you get that big you know, push like I said, about a month, month and a half after the first of the year for all the old stuff of 2022. And then you're gonna hit this very barren time of needing to have money come in. So you need to anticipate that. The other thing you need to know is that your Medicare patients are going to be shopping around and having to re-enroll in new plans by middle of November. So they're going to start shopping around, looking up stuff that goes into effect January 1st. So if there's any plans that maybe you're not participating with anymore or you don't plan on participating with anymore and you need to let your patients know about that, you need to do so. Maybe put up signs in the office or send out emails or or, um, portal messages to your Medicare patients to inform them maybe that you're no longer going to be uh, participating with certain plans and you know you can't tell patients what plans they need to enroll in you can't do that but you can inform them if there are things that you will not be accepting so if they're going to be shopping around they might not want to keep a current plan that you will no longer accept or they won't enroll in a plan that you don't accept. And you need to make sure that your staff knows that as well. So if patients call and ask and say, are there any plans that you aren't taking for Medicare, they can inform the patients because that happens a lot, especially in primary care internal med because patients really want to keep their doctors. And so a lot of times they will do things like that to sign up for plans that they know their doctor is on. Um, let's see what else. Uh, ordering your medications and vaccines before the end of the year. So I would be talking to your reps at the pharmaceutical companies or at your medical supply company and asking them if any charges or prices are gonna be going up after the first of the year, which most of the time they do. And if there's something that you use a lot of and it will be worth buying in bulk before the end of the year so you don't have to get that price change right away and pay that premium, I would do so. So if you can afford it and you know that you always are using a ton of Ketorolac, uh and or Ceftrioxone uh, and you know it's gonna go up $5 a bottle or $10 a bottle, you might want to you know, put some money out up front, buy at the lower cost and it will carry you over maybe through a little bit of that deductible period where money's a little tighter and you won't have to buy at the higher price right away. So that's another thing to think about. Um, let's see here, I'm trying to think. Uh, any kind of uh, quote promotions that you want to do within your office like if you want to start telling people that after the first of the year you're going to really focus on preventive medicine and your primary care and you really want to start encouraging people to get their annual screenings that's good because that doesn't usually go to people's deductibles so if you can start trying to get people to sign up for their annual wellness exams after the first of the year during the deductible period, that would be great because that is getting paid by insurance most likely. And that helps uh, guarantee a little bit of cash flow for you. But you also need to make sure that you're not signing up patients too early for their wellness exam. So make sure that you're well versed on that. Some patients, it's a year since their last exam. Sometimes it's calendar date. That's something you guys would need to look into for their eligibility and benefits. But you know, if that's a promotional type thing, you're gonna try to push in your office, you know, definitely consider that. If you're gonna try to hire somebody, try to figure out if it's best to hire them before the end of the year or start fresh in the beginning of the new year. Your accountant should be able to help you with that, your bookkeeper. These are all things that are really good to think about and I'm not trying to overwhelm you, but the last quarter of the year in medicine is always super busy for everyone, especially because the last two weeks of the year, a lot of places like pharmaceutical companies shut down completely and they're closed from Christmas through New Year's. So you're kind of tied into a little bit shorter time frame and you lose two weeks so that's something to keep in 
mind as well. Plus, you need to help your staff uh, with how to handle scheduling because you're going to get an influx of people most likely trying to hurry up and schedule something with you because they've met their deductible before the end of the year and they want to come in for a colonoscopy or they want to come in for some type of ailment that's been bothering them that they've been putting off. But now that their deductible is met, they're like, oh, my insurance is going to pay for this. I only have to pay a coinsurance and they're going to try getting in. So your front desk is going to get crazy busy and people are going to get upset with them. So you want to help guide them, have meetings, touch base with them, see how things are going and give them a heads up about that as well. The one last thing I want to talk about is evaluating your fee schedule. So you need to run reports in your billing software that is showing you how you're getting reimbursed by CPT code by payer. So it should break it down to your allowable and what you're getting reimbursed. So you can start kind of looking at where money is coming from. You should be able to run a report to see where, you know, like how many CPTs of 99213 you've filled out, how many 99212s, maybe your top billing 10 uh, CPT codes that you bill out for and reimburse for and start looking at comparing those. And if you're seeing some large discrepancies between reimbursement uh, between payers, that's definitely a sign that you might need to go back to one of those payers and negotiate. But this is a time that you really want to run those financial reports, kind of get a good temperature of where things are at. If you're going to need to negotiate anything with payers, if you need to increase any of your charges, like your fee schedule, because maybe um, what you're getting paid is what you're billing out, which means you need to increase that because you always want to have an adjustment on those. So, you know, look at that. And then January 1st is always a good time to kind of implement all that, right? Like we're starting our new fee schedule January 1st. It's just easier to keep track of and to kind of see where things are going. So definitely sitting down, looking at all that, comparing all of that and bringing in your billing specialist to help you, your manager, uh, anyone else in your office who is well versed in this kind of stuff. Don't try to do it all yourself. You're going to have to tap on other people to get their expertise, their opinions, their observations, and uh, be able to get all this done before the end of the year. Because not only that, but you need to start thinking about maybe your Christmas party or your holiday party you're going to be planning for your staff, which is always a nice thing to do to show them appreciation. And a lot of times they get excited about about it. So if you're going to reserve, you know, somewhere to host a dinner or a luncheon, you need to do that now as well, because things book up really fast. I mean, it's just, and time goes by so fast, especially this time of year. And you just don't want to be caught, you know, unprepared. So listen to this, put down your checklist, work on getting it done. And like I said, rely on the people around you who have their strengths in certain areas that can help you with this. If there's anything that I missed that you as a business owner or office manager also like to work on during the last quarter of the year, please leave that in the comments below. Smash the thumbs up button if today's video was helpful and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Be well, have a good one, bye-bye.